Hi all you pressure cooker lovers. Today I want to share some of the knowledge that I have gained in the few years of using pressure cookers. Instant pot and regular pressure cookers. I have a few here. I want to share some features, tips and tricks and maybe it will help you in your pressure cooking fun. So I have the instant pot pressure cooker. And I also have oh, the biggest and the smallest that I have that I want to tell you about. That's a 2 quart and that's a 14 quart. And almost everything in between. Okay? Some basics. The first thing I noticed online, people talking to me and in Facebook forums and stuff is the Instant Pot or Instapot as we call it. Some people don't associate this with a regular pressure cooker, but it's the same thing. It's a pressure cooker, it's just a brand name, Instant Pot. Kasori pressure cooker, just a brand name. Go Wise, same thing. Okay? And some people ask sometimes, I have the recipe for the Kasori, but how do I make that in the Go Wise? Same recipe. You know, if it's bigger or smaller, just change the uh, amounts, ingredients that you have. The pressure sealing valves, they're all a little different. They say sealing or venting or pressure or steam. Here we have a push button. See? You don't have to wiggle this at all on this little kasori. You press it for pressure and when you want to release the steam, you release the steam. Here in the instant pot, you put it on sealing. And it's normal to wiggle like that. That's normal. And then when you want to release your pressure manually, you go to venting and keep your face away from there and your hands <laughs> and some have a little red safety indicator that pops up some do not but there's the safety indicator there that's just a lot in itself you see when I close it see how it, when I open it see how it releases and it moves in there on the instant pot we wait for the red to drop and then it releases the safety. And there's so many safety features built into these, you don't have to worry about them ever having a problem with like your grandma's old models that they used to use on a stove top. As far as the pressure goes, yeah, I did tell you this one steam pressure, no red indicator. Here's a brand over here that has, well, this is a Kasori, a bigger Kasori. This does have a red indicator and kind of a square knob, it just shows a lock and a release. See? They're all a little different and they should all wobble. When the pressure builds up and it locks, it seals and it doesn't wobble anymore, but it's still able to release when you're ready. Some recipes call for natural release, which you leave this in sealing, let it cook through the cooking cycle, and don't touch it until your safety drops and you can open the lid easily. And these all come off. See? clean. There's a little clip in there. You might get it and it might be in a separate bag and you have to pop it on. Maybe you know that. But they don't all, all arrive unassembled. See? It's nice, huh? They all have kind of a vent here which causes the pin to lock. They come apart as well to rinse. Some are square, rectangular. Some are round. Oh, some have a big sealing ring like that. And you would take this apart and clean it like that. Put it back on. Same way you took it off. Pop it right back on. Clean it up good. Let me show you my very first pressure cooker. This is a Cuisinart. You see it has been through the mill a little bit. See that ding dang on there? <laughs> this is my first and most simplified time pressure manual. It's easy. Some have sealing rings like this. See? You just remove the seal, the ring, and clean that. Then you can pop it back in, but make sure every time before you start cooking that your ring is seated properly. 
because if there's a bubble, it won't seal right and you'll be leaking pressure. You'll never come up the pressure. Get that in there. Nice. Whew. This one has a nice steaming basket inside. You have so many accessories. You put water in the bottom, put some fish or something on top, or vegetables, whatever you like. Steam. Steaming function. They all have their little different differences, but all of them you can also go to manual. Just find your time for your recipe, press manual, and up and down with the time. It's so simple, really. Don't be afraid of it. I know you have one in a box you didn't open yet. <laughs> Condensation cups. Some people are a little confused about these. They come in a bag. Usually you have to pop them on. You either slide out like that. <laughs> they slide out easy or they go on from the bottom or they go in this way. And what that does is whatever steam builds up around your rim collects inside of there. And you can rinse this out and clean it out once in a while. Condensation cup. See, some are a little different. Here we have a different shape. This is the big 14 quart. That slides off as well. Like I said, some go up, some go in. Here we have one. This is a new Kasori as well. That is built in. See, that's not even removed yet. Take the tape off of there. And that clips in that way. A little bit different. Easy though. Huh? That collects your condensation. Is that helpful? And the hissing sound you hear when you start is normal. You generally need at least two cups of liquid, whether it be sauce or gravy or just water, to build up pressure. Because that's how a pressure cooker works. And when you start, it's going to take 10, sometimes 15 minutes to completely build up the pressure. Then you'll hear a hissing. Make sure you're in lock mode or pressure mode with your valve on top and make sure your lid is on correctly and the hissing will stop, okay? And people ask me, what's my favorite pressure cooker? I know I'm jumping ahead a little bit here. They're all good, they're all great except for the Elite. And let me tell you why. The Elite this is not my favorite. First of all, all the indicators wore off. This used to say pressure, release, and sealing. Now I really don't know which side is which, so once it starts building pressure, I gotta tap it around to make it stay. And when, even when it did have the indicators on there, when it was in sealing, it would never really seal properly. And I had to tap it, and wiggle it, you know? And I've heard that from other people too. And I emailed customer service for Elite, and they never answered me. Because I already bought it, what are they going to do, right? But that's what I have to say when people ask me, what is my favorite? They're all great. I like them a lot. Even from the simplest Cuisinart, that was my first one, to the most advanced, go wise with the pressure reading gauges. Yeah, go wise, or sorry. <laughs> the go wise has <laughs> pressure reading. I got some in here. Hang on. All right, there's another go wise down there. Let me show you. I tip on the Instant Pot how to turn the sound off. Sometimes the sound bothers people, you know, or scares your doggies. Turn the sound off on this. This is the only model that I know that has this option. To turn the sound off on your Instant Pot, press the minus button here. Hold it. Sound off. Now wait about 10 seconds until it registers. And it made a sound to tell me the sound was off. Now, for instance, if I press beans, no sound, see? And on that note, when you press any function, say you press meat, and you want to go up or down on the time, just do that, see? All the pre-programs you can change. And then you can cancel. And I like manual a lot. I just press manual because I know how many minutes I want to cook already. And then go up. Okay. Or down. 
and depending on your pressure cooker, some go up to 99 minutes. This one goes up to 240 minutes. It's a long time, four hours. If you're going to slow cook, you can also slow cook, you know. All right, let's turn it on. I don't want to know. Okay, now to turn the sound back on, press the plus button. This is just a little trick for you. Sound on. Now you wait till that registers and beeps. Nice, isn't it? Also, I mean, yeah. See, with the sound off, you won't hear your musical lid. A few of them have that feature. The iCock has that feature. The Instant Pot has that tinkling lid feature, which I like a lot because it's fun. Okay, let me cancel that. Cancel. Okay. That's the Instant Pot. So let's remove the Elite because he's my least favorite, although it's a 10 quart and it was good. And it still works, but it's my least favorite because I got the most advanced. The little spoon rest on the side, you wonder what are these little doodads for down here? Not to put your spoon in. Isn't that nice? They don't all have that. This little two quart cassori has it. And this big eight quart cassori has it. I don't think it's only cassori that has that feature, is it? I don't see pot. But if you find a little notch on the side there, it usually comes with a couple spoons or a ladle. That's where that goes. Okay. And you know, basically most of these lids come off by themselves. Take them and clean them. Some of them, like this little cassori, are convenient and they stay on like that. Isn't that nice? To take that apart, you just see how easy that is? This slides out like this. And you can clean that ring. This just has a ring as well. And again, you can remove this little valve. This one screws off. And this always comes out to clean. They're all the same that way. Put this lid back on. This is sorry as well. This is a pretty new one. Look how we open this one. It even confuses me sometimes. But I like it. See? You would think you would turn the handle, but you turn the lid. Once your pressure's out, of course. It opens this way. Like the small one. And comes out the same way. There's a pin there though. So you rotate it up here. Oh, this is what I wanted to show you here. This is how this lid comes off. See? Screws off. Fits in the square there. This is the only one I know that does this. And it's nice. This also, this came with an extra sealing ring, which is fantastic. A little steam, steaming basket, measuring cup. We got racks and slings and everything in between. Which brings me to the next topic. Slings. Put the little guy up here. Who we got here? Kasori, how many Kasoris I have here? Three, huh? Now this comes off different for a Kasori. You got a choice of stainless or non-stick. Personally, the stainless is beautiful to look at, but a little harder to clean, although I keep it pretty clean. Things do get burnt there once in a while, but we clean it with uh, SOS pad or one of those scrub daddy sponge things. Sometimes you might have a rack, which is a nice accessory. You put a chicken in there. Put chicken in there, which I did a few times. And when it's done, it's easy to get out. If you don't have a rack or if yours didn't come with it, you can make one out of aluminum foil, which we do often. Can you see okay here? Sheet like this. Fold it in half once, twice, 
get your bowl, whatever kind of bowl you have. I have a bowl here, don't I? Or whatever you're cooking in there, your chicken or whatever. I'll just demonstrate using this bowl, but this bowl has a handle. <laughs> this shows you again, you can use bakeware in here and make cheesecakes or what whatnots. Maybe this is a chicken or a bowl of soup or whatever like that if you don't have one of these it's a nice tip for that foil sling put your lid on make sure this don't get caught up here pull it down you're good okay be careful foil sling okay nice we got big racks little racks okay big rack Tiny rack, depends on what you're cooking today. Another sling, or a sling rack, you can go upside down with this, however you like to do it. Some of these are used as slow cookers, they have a slow cook function, right there. And some of them come with a lid as well. This lid don't fit this one. <laughs> Neither does this one. <laughs> anyway, I have a lid for that, but if you don't have a lid that fits perfectly, let me find one that it does fit here. It's the box. I know you got one. Right here. Now you have a slow cooker, which also has a slow cook function. And we cook roast in here for 10 hours. Whew, delicious. If you don't have a lid like that, put your lid on whatever pressure cooker you have. Set this to steam or release. Okay, and press slow cook. And it's just gonna release and not build up pressure all day. So, it doubles as a slow cooker as well. All right, there's the button, slow cook. They all have different dashboards. They're all getting more amazing and technical. And we like them. Important safety feature. Whenever you open the lid, when you're done cooking, you're probably facing it this way. Open it away from you, in case of any splatter. I've seen some boiling in there. Okay. Oh, and how do we clean the ridge? I'll show you how I clean the ridge. Sometimes you get splatter or food or cheese stuck in the rim here. I take a nice rag, butter knife, and we're in there. Wet or dry. See? I wouldn't use a sharp knife because you'll cut your cloth and scratch up your ceiling surface. Isn't that nice? Does that help? Beautiful. It's good to keep it clean because then it seals good. So if you got some breadcrumbs stuck in there, you might jeopardize your seal. Okay, we're going good here, aren't we? Let's put our racks aside. It's so much fun cooking with a pressure cooker. If you never did it before, Check a little video or uh, the recipe in the book, follow the directions. If you don't do it right the first time, it's still going to be real delicious because it makes everything so tender. But next time you'll know, I'll put a little more liquid this time or a little less time or more time. When you first get your new pressure cooker, a lot of people, the instructions also say do a water test. And a lot of people wonder, do I have to do a water test or what is a water test? You can. I did once or twice. Probably once I did. You put two cups of water in here, put your lid on, this is another go wise, I like these because they show you the pressure that's in there, you know, 12 pounds or whatever. And just pick a, a function, steam or rice, press it, make sure you're sealed and let it go through its cycle and make sure everything works alright. I've never had a defective one, but that's a way to test it without wasting four pounds of chicken or something, right? <laughs> like if it came up to pressure, if it never came up to pressure or if something wasn't sealed right, well you wouldn't really waste it, you could finish it on the stove I guess. Okay, I hope I taught you some things here. If I learn more tricks I'll let you know. Instant Pot, same as a pressure cooker, different brand name. They're all a little different, but they're all about the same. And I don't have one favorite 
like them all. They all have their personalities and gadgets and faces and dashboards. But you want know one thing? I watch a lot of pressure cooker sales on TV, infomercials and shopping channels, and they show you amazing things. You could feed an army. Well, there's a small army, even in my 14 quart. You could feed an army of ants or grasshoppers, maybe. <laughs> but you know what else? The commercials are so misleading. They'll open a pressure cooker and they'll show lasagna, for example, which is the recipe they got from me, but that's okay, I'm glad. But they'll show it full to the top and brown and crunchy on top. And that doesn't happen. Okay, that's fake. First of all, all these, your instruction books will tell you, do not fill to the top. Only fill like three quarters full because it needs space for pressure and bubbling and whatever. If this was filled to the top, and when you release your steam, it's going to spit out whatever ingredients you have in there, tomato sauce or foam. It's not meant to be filled. Those commercials are misleading. Okay. <laughs> they are. It's so funny to watch. You open it up, and it's brown and crunchy, and they got chickens that are brown and crispy skin. That's not going to happen. You can brown your meat and get brownness on it, but it's not going to be crispy at the end. Unless you put it in a broiler or finish it another way. Just so you know, don't do what they do. They do some things right, but a lot of things when they're trying to sell, they're misleading. They are. And also, however you put something in here, if you put a chicken and four potatoes in there, when you open it, it's going to look just like that. They don't bounce around and they don't move around. I've seen them put shells and sauce and cheese on top. When you open it, it's going to be just like that. The cheese is going to be somewhat down below, but they, they show it all mixed in and again crunchy on top, which everything's delicious and so tender it melts, but it's not going to be crunchy. <laughs> okay? I hope I helped you. We like pressure cooking, and I know you do too. I love all the brands. Kasori, Go Wise, Cuisinart was my first. I think I paid $89 for that, Cuisinart. It's so simple, and it works great. You get your two quart, your fourteen quart, your eight quart, your six quart, your ten quart. Instant pot. Don't forget you. That's what started all this. Instant pot is a pressure cooker. You call it an insta pot or an insti pot. But it's a pressure cooker. It's a brand name. Okay everybody, thanks for stopping by. I'm visiting with my ten or eleven pressure cookers. So oh, I forgot to show you the hippy dippy piece of love pressure cooker. You remember him? That's a four quart Cook's Essentials. That's a good one. Cheap. 69 bucks maybe on one of the channels. But they come in colors. They're fun. I just got it because of the color. I break up the monotony a little bit. <laughs> Alright. Thanks for watching. Stop back soon. Please subscribe. More pressure cook goodness coming up. Mm, don't be afraid. Try it. Just push a button. You're an expert chef. Amaze your family and friends and yourself. See ya.